Hello, I'm Ryan Burns, level designer from Ubisoft Bordeaux, and this is One-Liners, Maintaining Variety in Open World Titles. Uh, first, a little background on me. Uh, I started my career in California at Blizzard, where I worked on a number of World of Warcraft expansions. Uh, then I made the crazy decision to pick up and move to France, and where I joined Ubisoft Bordeaux, uh, where I've had the privilege of working on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, specifically the first expansion, Wrath of the Druids. So moving to the presentation, first I should answer the essential question, what is a one-liner? Well, a one-liner is a simple sentence that describes the gameplay intention of your level. It's important to note that it's not a description of the setting of your level, nor is it a list of narrative beats. Really focus on the gameplay intention and player mood. If you come from an architecture background, this would be similar to a parti pris or a log line for skiering writers. Um, here are a few examples I will showcase in a few slides. So the one-liner is a short step during your pre-production to help you solidify your intention. This step also helps generate ideas while you're clarifying that core vision. Now it might sound like a very simple and frivolous thing to do, or certainly something not worthy of a whole presentation, and the first time I heard about these one-liners, I didn't take it very seriously either. Uh, I had locations that started late, so I skipped this step. Or for others, I didn't quite understand the one-liner's purpose, so I wrote something down that was like a vague idea and moved on. Um, but now that Wrath of the Druids has shipped, I can look back at each of my locations, and the ones that are the best, the coolest, the most memorable, are the ones where I had strong one-liners. I had a strong vision and intention then I took the time to solidify and communicate that idea. Only then did I move into pre-production and start to execute on it. Now, that's not to say the locations that didn't have good one-liners are bad per se, they're fine, but they came out as more generic, forgettable bandit camps or generic military locations. So after going through the process myself, I felt the need to share this technique with others as it helped all of my levels I've done since. I truly believe taking the time during your pre-production to make a one-liner can really enhance your level. So let's talk more specifically about the ways a one-liner can help you. Uh, first, it ensures variety, and hence the title of this presentation. Uh, with one-liners, you're comparing the gameplay experiences across an area or a whole campaign. It's easy to see too many designers are building on similar patterns. This becomes doubly important in open-world titles with perhaps over 100 locations. How is this bandit camp different from the 15 others? What is the intention of each? The one-liner quickly showcases your bandit camp's unique flavor. Additionally, it adds clarity during especially difficult design decisions. With a one-liner, a designer can better find a course of action to reinforce their one-liner and thus their vision. You're going to be faced with decisions about geometry, scripting, enemy types, ingredients, whatever. If you're referring back to your one-liner, it becomes clearer what is the correct direction to take. The one-liner always brings you back to that core vision. And lastly, it communicates intent. So many people will touch a level or location before it ships. With a one-liner, every person brought on board will quickly understand the core idea and be able to build upon it and reinforce that vision. It can really make a location shine when all minds are focused on the same goal. It's easy to say it's a bandit camp, but when everyone hears swinging Tarzan bandit camp, they're all building to a more specific gameplay experience. So I've talked about a little uh, uh, about the one-liner in theory, but I'd like to show some examples to help clarify what a one-liner looks like and how it helps. So this is a video from some of Montreal's early prototyping the level designer on this location started with the one-liner, be a shark. Now notice how little cover the designer provided above. This encourages the player to use the water to sneak up on their enemies, thus reinforcing the one-liner. The geometry matches the intention. Now the player can hunt their prey from the waters below. They really feel like a shark in this area. 
They're sneaking up and pulling unsuspecting, unsuspecting enemies into the water. This is so unique and different from a traditional guard camp because it started with a strong vision of what was solidified by the one-liner. Now this second video is a little different as it uses a gameplay ingredient as its focus, the haystack, then built upon it to create the one-liner hide and seek. By Focusing so specifically on a single ingredient, the designer is able to create a unique scenario that other locations wouldn't provide. Now, you'll often find a lot of farms in open world games, but this location managed to set itself apart and keep variety by leveraging its one-liner and a specific gameplay ingredient. And for my last example, I wanted to use something from a linear game, and Raven Home from Half-Life 2 is such an amazing example. Uh, now, I'm not sure if the designer developed a one-liner specifically during pre-production, but they obviously had a very clear vision for what they wanted to create. And a one-liner is simply a tool to help you define exactly what that vision is. So one key feature of the level is how it makes the player rely on the environment for survival. The designer doesn't provide ammo for your guns, so the player must lean on the gravity gun and objects around them to kill zombies. The lack of ammo adds tension for the player, forcing them to keep aware of the tools around them to defeat the enemies, and thus reinforcing the horror movie theme. Also take note of the enemy types that the designer is using. Would this level have been effect as effective if it was all military soldiers instead of head crabs and zombies? The theme and the intention would be blurrier. Also note the head crab on the hook, which is another great usage of foreshadowing as that enemy will appear later in, later in the level. And again, reinforcing that horror movie theme. So what makes this level so memorable is how effective it is at reinforcing that core intention. It's a holistic experience where everything is reinforcing horror movie. The traps, the enemy types, the lack of ammunition, the spawning, the scripting. All of these design decisions reflect a very simple idea. You're in a horror movie. So now we move to construction. How do we go about creating a one-liner? Well, the two most reliable methods that I've found for creating a one-liner come from the concepts of top-down and bottom-up. These terms are pretty common in other areas of design, even outside of game development, so perhaps you may have heard of these before. But we're going to repurpose them to help us create our one-liner. Top-down starts at the high concept. You're already likely close to your one-liner as you have a strong idea in your mind of what you want the player to feel while playing your level, but maybe at this stage, it's still a bit more nebulous. The next step is to work down to your ingredients, how you want to build your geometry, the enemy types you'll select. So we're working from the high concept down to the nuts and bolts of what we will include in our level. And from there, we can more accurately summarize our vision into a one-liner. Think back to be a shark from earlier. The high concept of a shark obviously adds, leads us to include a lot of water. Next, the designer elected to remove any cover or stealth opportunities on the land as to push the player downward into the water. And lastly, the designer scripted the enemy patrols near holes in the ice so the player can pop up for a stealth kill. If you're completely stuck on a location, animals are a wonderful starting point. The variety in the animal kingdom is immense, so you can find drastically new ideas by picking an animal and adapting it to your game style and genre. In Valhalla, there were locations based on sharks, spiders, monkeys, and more. Uh, not all one-liners are animal related, but it can be a wonderful idea generator if you're struggling to come up with something. 
Now, bottom-up does the reverse. Here we start with a specific ingredient or enemy type. Then we brainstorm ideas from that ingredient to find a cool direction for the level. And lastly, we take the time to summarize that idea down into a simple phrase for your one-liner. Think back to Hide and Seek from all of the haystacks. The designer started with a single ingredient, the haystack, and amplified it to create a unique gameplay space. Then it was easy to select a setting, such as a large farm after a harvest, to give the ingredient justification for its inclusion. By starting with one ingredient, you begin to generate ideas on how to best utilize it, which, you can, which pulls you in a new direction or and eventually a great one-liner. To find more bottom-up techniques uh, or I ideas, uh, you can use a variety mat matrix. Now, if you're not familiar with these, a variety matrix is a document generated in rational level design. I don't have time to cover all of the ins and outs of RLD, but I believe making this document can be helpful regardless if you're using rational level design or not. So the variety matrix is simply a list of all your game's ingredients and enemy archetypes. Then additionally, you create a list of all your levels in the game, which, use in, which ingredients go where. And that shows you exactly which ingredients are used too much and too little. Uh, and from there, you can find an opportunity to select an ingredient that may be underutilized, and you can create a unique location from that. It's also really interesting to take something from the player. Uh, in the Ravenholm example, the designer removes ammo, so the player can't rely on a tool they've been using for most of the game, in this case, their guns. Making a strong one-liner is sometimes tricky, so I wanted to showcase some traps that I myself have fallen for uh, with some sample one-liners. Uh, here we have hero in a destroyed airfield. Now, this one-liner makes a common mistake of describing setting and not the gameplay. Is it a hectic Call of Duty shootout at a bombed out airfield? Is it a calm, somber point for uh, the player to witness the destruction of the area? I don't really have any idea. So let's try something a little bit more gameplay focused, like we have you surrounded. You immediately get a sense of what's happening and how the scene is playing. One guy against 100, a tense standoff, whatever. Uh, this one liner is clearly about the gameplay intention of the level. Next up, exploring an ancient temple for treasure. This one's better because it includes a verb and an objective, but it still isn't quite clear how the player feels during the level. We could be busting in guns ablaze like Nathan Drake, or we could be delicate archeologists examining every detail. It's not really clear. So let's try instead, watch your step, it could be your last. Now we can infer that the pace is very slow. The player is examining every step as to not set off dangerous booby traps. And maybe even the, the energy shoots through the roof when the player triggers a trap and they have to flee or dodge. And lastly, we have companion gets kidnapped. Now this seems more like a narrative beat and not a gameplay intention. This is not to say your narrative cannot be hugely influential. In fact, it might be the whole reason your level exists as to set up this moment. But again, we want to focus on the gameplay consequence of that narrative moment. So let's instead try aquaphobia, fear of water. Perhaps the companion character was the one with all of the survival skills. So being alone is a really big deal and a scary scenario. Think young Ellie without Joel in Last of Us 1. Joel was the one that could swim, and now all of a sudden things become more challenging without him around, like not being able to get across a water segment. We're using the consequences of that narrative beat, the companion being kidnapped, to find our gameplay intention, fear of water. So I'm gonna bring this presentation to a close, but there are some points I would like to review about the one-liner before I let you go. First, and the most important thing to remember is to keep the one-liner gameplay focused. Everything else is a byproduct of what your gameplay intentions are. If you're stuck or you're not feeling particularly inspired, try using top-down or bottom-up to generate new ideas for your location. 
And lastly, as you move into each design decision, ask yourself if this choice reinforces your intention. If not, remove it and simplify down to the essentials of your vision. And that's it. The one-liner is just a short step to get your thinking focused on the big picture player experience. During production, it's so easy to focus down on the tiny details and lose that vision. The one-liner provides as a guide and a reminder through all stages of development. Uh, I should take the time to say that Ubisoft Bordeaux is hiring, so if you're interested in perhaps an opportunity in France, be sure to check out our website. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time. Again, I'm Ryan Burns, and if you want to reach me, I'm on Twitter at Burns Designs. Skull.